Emmy, don't cry. Uh, but I'm weak and fragile. Hunters are supposed to be wild, but I'm not good enough to become one. Wild? Not good enough? Ugh, those guys don't know anything. Don't take them seriously. Really? I'm not useless? You're not. You're my favorite friend. I respect you and your family's work. A memory from my childhood. My childhood friend, Emmy, cried a lot and laughed a lot. That's the Emmy that I... Whoa, it was a dream. When I looked at the clock, it was almost 1 p.m. I had eaten lunch and fallen asleep. My name is Minato Ichikura. I'm 28, and I work at a travel agency in the city. It's been a while since I dreamt about my hometown. Maybe I was feeling nostalgic because Emmy's coming to Tokyo tomorrow. My hometown is in the countryside in northeastern Japan. The population decreases every year, and it's said that there are more animals than people. At this rate, the village will die out. Upon feeling an impending doom, I decided to revive the town as a student. I had gathered some classmates and advertised, but it was radio silence. I saw the end of the road, and started working at a travel agency in the city. I heard Goto-san always eats lunch with his girlfriend. In comparison, I feel bad for you. <laughs> This was the new hire, Shiori Kobayashi. She had started working upon graduating high school, and she's always bothering me. You're almost 30, and you don't even have a girlfriend? That's a sad life. You're probably alone on weekends too, huh? Want me to go on a date with you? I'll let you make some memories at least. No, no thank you. Th this little... how unknowing. Why does she always say these rude things to me? It was true that I had never done anything close to dating. That's why her words hit close to home and hurt me. I have no clue why I've been receiving these comments every day. When she first entered the company, she wasn't used to using her computer, so I showed her, or I stopped the higher up from forcing her to drink at a work party. I think that's pretty normal. Maybe she thought it was some old guy being weird? I don't know about these city girls. When I would talk to my co-workers, they would just laugh and say I should be grateful I'm getting attention from a young girl. The next day, I got ready quickly to greet my childhood friend who was coming to Tokyo. What? You're going home even though you're just gonna be alone? I think it'd be better for society if you worked overtime. Or, do you want to go get food with me? I'm sure you'll never in your life get to have a meal with a young woman. Kobai-san insulted me without hesitation. I looked at the omamori I had in my chest pocket and sighed. Unfortunately, I have plans. I have friends I love and a person I'm interested in. Bye. What? Wait! A person you're interested in? Wait! Ichikura-san, wait! I walked quickly through the city to get to the meeting place. Winter was almost over, but the wind on my face was still cold. It's been three years. I wonder how she's been. In my line of sight, I saw the backside of someone with blowing black hair. Could it be? I called out to them. Wait, Emmy? The person turned around slowly. Hey, Minato. Long time. Dang it! Give back the feelings I just felt! Even though they were dressed femininely, their voice gave it away. It was Emmy's older brother, Reiji. Why are you... Huh? Wait, that outfit! I know, it's a surprise, huh? What? This is just what I like. What happened in the past three years? A popular model named Haruto-kun came to our hometown. He was dressed like a woman to hide his identity. He was beautiful. When I heard that, I got into it too. Man, city people are amazing. I knew you wanted to be a model, but you were influenced in quite a unique way. Where's Emmy? Um, so, actually she got overwhelmed by the crowds. She's resting at the hotel right now, and it might be hard for her to come. I see. <laughs> I'm sad. I thought Emmy might have dressed up for me. Dang. Deijin and Emmy are planning to stay in Tokyo for a while. It was their first time in this area of Japan. Emmy was always getting sick, and I guess she's in a new environment. I want to go look at clothes before dinner. Also, makeup. It's nice that the stores in the city close later. Are you gonna walk around in that outfit? Of course! I can't show my parents this outfit. I have to enjoy it! <laughs> Wait, are you Ichikura-san?
There was Kobayasan with a look of shock on her face. Her bag fell from her hands to the ground with a thud. Kobayasan. Huh? You know her? Hello, I'm his girlfriend. Huh? Reishi hugged me and spoke in a high pitched voice. It sounded like a woman's voice. Possibly. But wait, Kobayasan's always made fun of me, so maybe this is my chance for a little revenge. I almost played along with Reiji's joke, but there was no light in Kobayasan's eyes. I see. You're the one Ichikura-san likes. I see. I see very clearly. Wait, Manato, you told about me. Shut up, you moron. Wait up. It's not like that, Kobayasan. I had a bad feeling and tried to clear the misunderstanding, but Kobayasan walked away. I tagged along to Rage's shopping, ate food, and then we went our separate ways. We got excited over stories from our past. The next afternoon, I noticed something weird. What's wrong? My stuff keeps disappearing today. I don't remember bringing them home or dropping them anywhere. You've been busy lately. So maybe you didn't notice? I'll lend you mine. My stuff disappeared the next day too. My scissors and stapler were gone. Did someone take them? No way. Ichikura-san, the manager was looking for you. Oh, Kobai-san, thanks. Kobai-san became a completely different person after that night. She hasn't said a single insult to me today, too. Oh, Ichikura-san, you have a thread popping out of your jacket. I'll cut it. Give it here. What? I feel bad. I'll do it myself. Oh, wait. I don't have scissors. I have a sewing kit, so don't worry. It was my lucky item for today's horoscope. I see. Thanks. Shiori-san almost forced me to take off my jacket and cut the thread with some small scissors. <laughs> I was supposed to see Amy tonight since she was feeling better. I was getting ready to finish work quickly. Wait! I realized that the omamori in my chest pocket was gone. No way! I had it when I got here! When? Where did I drop it? When I helped Goto with the documents he dropped everywhere? When I looked for the manager's contacts during lunch? There were too many possibilities, but it had to be in the office. I started looking in a panic. I looked for it in between my work, but I couldn't find it. I asked the janitors about it, but it was no use. I looked around after work, but nothing. I'm gonna be here until the meeting time. Why today? Ichikura-san, did you find what you were looking for? No, I might have to just give up today. Obaisan smiled faintly as she put something in front of me. It's not a replacement, but have this. It's handmade. My psychic said that anyone who received this would become happy. It's super effective. Um, I appreciate the thought, but why? I thought you didn't like me. Obaisan opened her lifeless eyes and her cheeks reddened. I like you, Ichikura-san. I couldn't be honest with myself. I'm sorry. But the psychic said this. Get the person's attention and make them think about you. You like me? Even though I'm almost 30? And you keep saying psychic. My brain couldn't keep up with Kobayasan's words, and I felt creeped out. I get what you're saying, but I was hurt many times by your words and don't have good memories of you. That was to get your attention, and not on purpose. Okay, you're still young, so maybe you couldn't say how you felt. I know. Still, I can't accept your feelings. I'm sorry. I can't accept this omamori. I have plans, so I'll be off. I Ichikura-san? Kobayasan tried to stop me, but I left the office. Hey, Minato! Long time! How you been? Through the cold city air, a warm voice called out to me. Emmy! It was sure this time. She looked as happy as she did three years ago. When she was young, there was a touch of sadness about her. Now, there was nothing like that. She grew stronger than the average person. And now, she works for her family's hunting business and manages a national park. I ran to her, and Emmy took out a scarf from a paper bag to wrap around my neck. This is your birthday present. Winter's almost over though. Sorry, I made it with love. Oh, I'm happy. Thank you. Emmy, are you feeling okay? 
I'm used to running around the forest, but the waves of people got me. But now I'm fine. Full recovery. Her wide smile left me speechless. Um, Emmy, the Omamori. Ichikura-san! Kobayasan came out of breath. She must have run because her cheeks were bright red. You're silly. You forgot something. It's an Omamori, so you have to keep it on you. She pressed a handmade Omamori from earlier on to me. Wait, I told you I can't. Stop it. Amy took the Omamori and frowned at it. Then, she ripped it up without hesitation. Wait! What are you doing? Along with some cotton, some thread. Wait, hair came out. Whoa. What's this? I had a bad feeling. This isn't an Omamori, it's a curse. The smile left Kobayasan's face, and she looked at Emmy with cold eyes. How awful! My psychic told me that if I gave this to him, we'd definitely fall for each other. I worked hard on it. You're quite popular. I'm being tested by another woman. By fate today. You wouldn't even look at a plain girl like me if I acted normally. The psychic I found online saved me. They said things would work if I did what they said. I dyed my hair, made myself stand out, acted tough. I transformed. Kobayasan spoke accusingly. Is she saying that the way she acted toward me was all because of the psychic? But you were never interested in me. This must be what was getting in the way the whole time. That? Kobayasan took out the omamori I had lost from her pocket. What is this? Some evil thing? This looks so much more like a curse. Minato, that's... You stole it when you took my jacket! Kobayasan, give it back. Someone important gave it to me. Kobayasan looked back and forth at my face and Emmy's. Then, she smiled gloatingly. This street is big, so it has a lot of cars. You wouldn't be able to pick something up if you dropped it, right? This thing can get lost. Wait! Kobayasan threw the omamori toward the road. It left her hand. When... Whoa! That was close. Reiji had appeared by the road and caught it. It was crazy timing. What? Who? Why are you there? I've been training since I was young to not have wild animals notice me. I'm Hunter's son. Reiji, you saved me. Thank you. You're in usual clothes today? Nah, I'm on my way back from an audition. I came to see what's up, and something's happening? Young lady, this is the bear's fang that Amy gave to Manato. A hunter. No, our ancestors kept it for protection. Emmy and Deja's family have carried on the hunter's faith and practices. Emmy was carrying on that practice. From the bottom of my heart, I admired them for protecting traditions and the village. And Manitos liked Emmy since they were little. Give up already. But, my psychic. Ichikura-san and I are going to live happily ever after. Faith isn't a tool for your own ego. Calm down. Kobayasan looked at me, and I nodded. I like Emmy. I plan on returning to the village soon. Kobayasan, you can like fortune telling, but don't get too into it. I spoke to her to calm her down, but Kobayasan was shaking and hugging herself. No, 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 no. Lies. This is a joke. I, I can't. Then we have to die. What? Shiorsan lifted up a brick from the ground near a flower bed. Without hesitation, she tried to hit my face with it. Huh? What? I reflexively protected myself with my arm. A broken arm was inevitable. I felt a chill run down my spine. Emmy had come in between us and slapped the brick out of Kobayasan's hand. She grabbed her collar. Yeah! Your movements are slow and simple. Compared to a wild boar, piece of cake. Emmy raised a hand that held onto the collar. Put me down! Stop it! Stop? You've got some nerve trying to hurt someone important to me. Don't come close to Minato ever again, you bitch! Kobayasan was about to be eaten alive by Emmy's anger. She was pale, and her eyes were swimming. I... I'm sorry. Help me. Mommy. I came to my senses and stopped a nearby security officer for help. I reported to the police as well. Reiji had been recording from start to finish. He had been watching. Monato! This... You kept it. I guess it wasn't so good at keeping the demons away. Emmy handed me the fang. 
She had given it to me in tears before I left my hometown. Sorry, I couldn't move. It's been a while. I'm embarrassed. People freeze up when they're suddenly attacked by a wild animal. It's the same thing. I just happen to do this every day. I was sickly and weak. I worked hard to be someone you could be proud of. You complimented me for my work as a hunter. Emmy, I want to go back home and revive our town. I want people to know about the village and your work and pass it all down to the future. I think that's a great dream. I want to help. Amy's mouth loosened into a smile. It was the kind smile I had always loved. After that, Kobayasama was interrogated, and it came out that she was addicted to fortune telling. The psychic she had found online was a scam artist that fed into people's doubts. The things I thought I had lost were found in Kobayasan's bag and room. She was unstable and deemed unfit to continue working. She ended up quitting. Currently, she lives at home away from the internet as a form of rehabilitation. Also, I heard that the scam artist was caught a few days later and arrested. Man, I didn't think I would be the one seeing you off this time. You passed the audition and became a model, right? It seems tough, but good luck! The cold season was coming to an end. I quit my job and was going back to my hometown with Hemi. Revival. That's why you were studying at the travel agency. I'm sorry to leave it all up to you. Don't worry. You have your own life. Let's work hard. We waved goodbye to Reiji and passed through the station to our Shinkansen. Renato! Welcome home. The train just took off. Too soon. Welcome back. We held hands as if to confirm our feelings for each other. It was like I could feel her feelings through our hands. Liking someone doesn't give you a free pass to ignore their feelings. Love is built on feelings from both sides. That's why I want to think deeply about the people I love, face to face. I want to tell them endlessly that I love them. 